Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome to another Wednesday night sacred pipe ceremony. I am Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman, and <clears throat> I am not at my normal place. Let me show you where I am. My car is on the blink, and I went and bought bought a um, battery jump starter today and found out that it has to be plugged in for at least a day before you can use it. So I'm still kind of stuck at home. So right now where we are is this little, little aisle, little alleyway between my complex back there and this apartment complex right there. And it might be a little loud because the road is right there, but I figured there's all this nice greenery and technically we're not supposed to smoke on the grounds. We can't smoke in our apartment, but we also, I found out recently that we're not supposed to smoke any place on the grounds. So, let me, let's see, does that work? Ba -ba -ba. We're just kind of playing it by ear tonight. There we go, that works. So I am just right here. Make the best, you know, it's still got this beautiful, these cedar trees behind me and Okay, I'm probably, oh, I, I knew this was the right place to go because I found a hollow bone when I, when I was looking for a spot. Actually, it was over there a little further, but I prefer this spot because, number one, you can't see the apartments behind me, and number two, they can't see me. I don't want to be a public spectacle. So I'm just getting my altar set up here. I will explain in just a little bit what I'm doing, what we're doing here, and why. As soon as I get everything settled here. Either where you go and not exactly knowing. Who says you have to call just one place home? New dreams and better scenes. And best of all, I don't pay property tax. Alrighty, almost there. Almost, almost. Alright. Alright. Haha! <laughs> now we're cooking. Alrighty, so. The first thing, as always, I am going to set sacred space. Before we do any ceremony, it's good to set sacred space. You know, even if it's just to, you know, surround yourself in white light, that basic. But when I do it, I like to drum because the drum, um, the drum is probably the oldest instrument we've got, right? As it goes back to the heartbeat, right? As the heartbeat of the earth. And so humans have been using drums for literally since the beginning of time, right? And from that time, we have called the spirits, the gods, the ancestors with the drum. So to this day, when you start to beat a drum or you start to shake a rattle, the spirits ears all perk up and like, okay, where's the party? What are we doing? 
And so I use, I like to use the drum to call them in. And the reason we do this um, is not for protection. It's not from that like dual mindedness, good and evil, and I have to protect myself um, from all those things out there that want to suck my soul dry, right? It's more of creating a container, an energetic container within which, like, like a pot that you're cooking your meal in, right? You, um, you, you put your ingredients into the pot and you cover it, you put it on the heat and you create an artificial environment where certain things can happen, certain changes and alchemy that don't happen when the ingredients are just sitting on the counter. So that's what we do. That's what we're doing when we set sacred space. Um, and this is the way I do it. This isn't the one and only way by any means, but this is how I do it. the boundaries of my apartment complex kind of a little bit I don't want to drum too loud I don't want to alert people I'm hoping I, so the thing is I'm hoping that this isn't considered um, the complex property because I'm in the alleyway between our complex and the next one and I think it's kind of a no man's land because we're not technically allowed to smoke on the grounds which is Kind of weird, but anyway, so what are we doing? We are doing, performing a sacred pipe ceremony. And um, this is a sacred pipe. You may have heard it called the peace pipe in old westerns and such. <coughs> and um, this is an old tradition like from 19 generations ago um, white buffalo calf woman, this spirit woman, came to the Lakota people um, near what we call Devil's Tower or Bear Lodge, and she brought the people the original sacred pipe, <laughs> and she taught them how how to smoke it in a sacred manner, how to honor the pipe, and then she gave a total of seven ceremonies, all of which center around the pipe because as she explained to them, the stem is the divine masculine and the bowl is the divine feminine. So when we put them together, it is all of creation. It is basically the divine presence right here. It's like for a nomadic people, this was church. Church could be brought along with you anywhere you went. And so, um, and the other thing, especially why it is so pertinent today, um, the bowl of the pipe is made from a stone called catlinite. <coughs> and it is said that the red of the stone is the red of the blood of all nations. And so when we smoke the pipe, you know, even adding our own prayers and intentions in there, part of what we're actually doing is praying for for um, the unity of all nations. Um, and if you know what the medicine wheel is, like the Lakota medicine wheel, it's a circle with the cross in it. And it's got like the red, white, yellow, and black colors. Those four colors are the four races, the four nations of humanity. And so we are when we smoke the pipe, we are invoking that unity, that sacred hoop, as 
Black Elk called it. Um, and so we are calling forth the unity of all people, no matter what color the skin is, everyone's blood is red, at least the last time I checked. So, um, what the ceremony itself, just so you can, can follow along, um, the first thing I'm going to do is light some sage <coughs> and I'm going to smudge everything on this little altar in front of me. Um, and then I am going to pick up my pipe and say a prayer asking permission to smoke in this place at this time. Um, assuming that the answer will be yes, um, I will put the pipe together at that point and then I will fill the bowl with four pinches of tobacco. And that part I say out loud. So you'll hear the prayers and offerings that I say during that part as I'm putting, filling the pipe and then once I, once I have the pipe filled, um, I have a song that White Buffalo Calf Woman, um, who has been a guide for me, one of the main guides for me for over 15 years now, um, she gave me a song to sing before each ceremony that I facilitate. So I will sing that song at that point once I put the pipe together. <laughs> then I will light the pipe and then the next thing I do in silence, but just so that you can follow along, what you'll see me doing is offering the pipe and blowing a pipe, a smoke blessing to the four directions, to Father Sky, to Mother Earth, in a circle for all our relations, and then the Great Spirit. Then I will pause for a moment with the stem to my forehead and the bowl to my heart um, for a moment of silent prayer. Then I will come back and relight the pipe if I need to. And then the first thing I will do, um, geez, my hair is a mess. <laughs> um, the first thing I will do is take a great big pop and I will blow it straight at my camera. And that is the point where you wanna say your biggest, bestest prayers or set your biggest, bestest intentions. That's a, that's a blessing coming from me through the, you know, from the pipe, from the tobacco nation, and that smoke is going through my camera and by the magic of the holographic universe and the quantum reality and the internet is coming out whatever device you're watching this on to your heart. So that is the, and that smoke is coming to carry your prayers and your intentions to great spirit. Um, then I will continue to smoke and, and um, got a number of prayers and intentions for myself, for other people have asked me to pray for them. And so if you ever, if you ever need prayers, if you ever have prayer intentions and you don't know where to turn, I'm here. And that's part of my job. And I do pipe ceremony almost every day every day if i can help it um but almost every day and if you send me you can private message me or <coughs> text me um what your prayer intentions are ask me to put those prayers into my pipe and i will smoke them and i will send those prayers to great spirit for you so um so I will smoke for a little bit longer with my own intentions, etc. I might pause for a moment, meditation, and then come back and smoke some more. And then when everything feels complete, <coughs> um, I will raise my pipe again for another prayer. I will sing another song and I will take the pipe and burn. And then depending on the time remaining or um, if anyone discovers me here and is bugging me or whatever, <laughs> um, I usually, something starts coming through. My guides start talking to me and messages come through. So that's always worth sticking around for if you feel like it. And then when we're done at the end, um, I've got a couple of, usually a couple of announcements, just what's coming up, and I will 
draw them again and release those spirits who are right now holding such beautiful sacred space around us and then that will be it so um, so I'm going to go ahead and start and thank you so much for joining me thank you for taking you know an hour or so out of your your busy schedule um, to turn your gaze from without to within right oh and a shout out to Gaia's temple if you're local in the Seattle area um, I believe this Sunday Gaia's, Gaia's temple.org it's a pagan house of worship based on the divine feminine that meets in in Seattle on the second Sundays from two to four um, figured since I'm wearing the shirt I should do them a shout out but anyway uh, let's do ceremony May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift you spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May the beauty of the fire lift your spirits higher. May the beauty of the earth fill your heart with mirth. May the beauty of the rain wash away your pain. May the beauty of the sky make your mind to fly. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. May you walk in beauty in a sacred way. May you walk in beauty each and every day. are all coming and joining in they're actually <laughs> congregating up on the top of the tree right there I, and I haven't ever seen them do that they came to smoke with them anyway. <sighs> grandmother grandfather eagle we send a voice we ask permission to smoke in this place at this time all our guides and guardians watch over us as we smoke 
<laughs> Creator, Earth Mother, Tawabin, Shana DC, Magic Hewis, and Waboos, there is always room for you in my time. Creator, Earth Mother, or the two-legged, the four-legged, the winged, the, the crawlers and the swimmers, all our relations come smoke with us. Grandmother Moon, Grandmother Ocean, <laughs> to the energy of birth, growth, maturity, the spirit realm, and our ancestors, may all the passages of our lives be in harmony and grace. Creator, Earth Mother, to Eagle, Coyote, Bear, White Buffalo, White Buffalo Calf Woman, Bringer of the Pipe and the Law of Good Relations to the People. Okane bayama okane bayama okane bayama okane okane bayama okane bayama okane bayama okane okane bayama okane bayama okane Bayama Ukane Yo
grandmother, grandfather, eagle, we send you another voice. Thank you for the beautiful cacophony of crows joining us, smoking with us this evening. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the path ahead. Thank you for clearing our way to the highest vibrational timeline possible for the human race. Thank you for miracles that come from nowhere. Thank you for hope. Thank you for love. Uh -huh. <laughs> Aren't that cross? Isn't that awesome? Thank you guys. I always kind of think of them as the, the voice of the ancestors. And I remember when I was little, I would, um, we would go, we used to camp a lot when I was a kid, and um, I remember at that time, in the suburbs where I was, sorry, I'm so distracted, they're flying all around it. Um, in the suburbs where I was raised, we didn't get a lot of crows back then, and the only time I heard crows were when we went camping. And so they became, to me, like the voice of the wild, the voice of the woods, the voice of the spirits of the woods and the forest. There was always something so magical about them. There still is. And actually just today, two different times, they, I found crow feathers as I was walking around. It was like right at the right time, at the right place to let me know that I was in sync with the universe, that I was in harmony. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just so tickled. Like I said, I don't, I don't remember them ever doing that. My apartment is just over there a bit. And if this was like a, a daily or nightly routine, I would have heard that. But I feel honored by their presence. Oh, wow. I'm not sure, but I think interesting. Um, I think they're sitting in a cottonwood tree. I'm not the best. I'm not an arborist. I don't know my trees real well. I know that these are cedars. But I think, and the, 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 why that's interesting is that um, in a little, like a week and a half or so, I'm heading down to a sun dance ceremony. And it's a Lakota ceremony where they, they take a cottonwood tree and they erect it in the middle of the, of the area and it's like that's the tree of life and they all these different they have like an effigy of a of a human and of a buffalo up there and it's like it's it's really powerful and that's it's the one you may have heard of where um some of the dancers will attach um what do you call it? They, they pierce their skin, like on their chest or on their back, and then they attach those 
piercings to the tree and they spend four days out in the hot sun and um, fasting and that's where they spend four days, four whole days attached to the tree. And then when that time is up, they pull against it so that those piercings rip out. Um, that's one of the ceremonies that White Buffalo Calf Woman brought them, brought the Lakota people. I'm just so honored to be, have been invited. This is the second year in a row I've been able to go and it is, such an honor. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, just to, just like for four or five days being, being in constant ceremony, being in constant prayer. And it's amazing. So anyway, I'll stop looking at the crows now. <laughs> Um, I don't know that I've got anything else to say. It's, if you're like me, it has been a really interesting few weeks. Things um, personally, things nationally, things globally have been um, really sh shaken up. And I know there's a lot of... Uh, uncertainty and despair going around that's why we do ceremony because ceremony connects us to our greater selves there's there's more of us unseen than the parts that are visible and it connects us ceremony connects all of those so that we are drawing on the forces of the unseen realm in order to change and to heal the physical realm. Um, it's in the unseen realm that the true power is. And when we do that, it's not just praying and then, you know, wishful thinking, hoping things work out. It's alignment, sending our prayers and then listening with our hearts. And because we're in line, in alignment with spirit, with our unseen selves, our hearts become inspired and spirited. And everything we do from that place is inspired action. And that's where real healing comes from. That's where real change comes from. Um, and there is always, always a solution to any problem, to any challenge. Um, because miracles are what happens when nature is left to its own devices. So when we can surrender to the natural flow, things have a tendency to work out. And when you live in alignment as much as you can, when you do ceremony, um, you're more connected, you're more in alignment so that you just tend to be in the right place at the right time. Um, you'll notice, start to notice synchronicities happening. The right people are showing up at the right time um, to direct you in the right direction or with the exact information you needed. You, know, you might start noticing angel numbers like like 333, 444, 777, etc. Like different number patterns and um, those aren't, it's not just some woo-woo um, coincidence, made up, imagined thing. When you're, when you're experiencing those synchronicities, that's how you know that you're on the right path, that you're in the right place. And everything you do from that place is exponentially more powerful. Like Abraham Hicks 
says that one person in alignment is more powerful than thousands of people that aren't. So just think about that. Think about how powerful you are. Think about, there's, there's this, this fun exercise I do with my students and I can't really do it here because we're not in person and um, you're probably just watching this on your own. But if you get the chance with someone with a partner, if you have, if you, you both put your hands out, right? One person has their hands inside, the other person has their hands outside. And um, like count to three, and then the person with the hands on the inside tries to push them out, and the person with their hands on the outside try to push in. Um, the first time is just to kind of see, and it's usually this kind of like tug of war, push and pull, um, just to get the baseline. And then um, you do it again, and the same, the same positions, only this time the person with their hands on the outside thinks of something or someone they love, they think of a pet, think of what are their favorite memories, think of when they felt joy. And so to bring that feeling up and then count to three and repeat. And whereas the first time, usually it's like the, the hands don't come together because the person on the inside is pushing out and the person on the outside is pushing in kind of on an even keel, right? But what's amazing is when you, when you call up feelings of love, feelings of connection, feelings of wholeness, you are physically more strong than you were before. And the second time, you're almost, I mean, it's like you, you will be amazed. It's, it's, it's a very experiential thing. My explaining it doesn't do it justice. But I learned this from uh, Martha Beck. I got to see Martha Beck do a book signing and she had us do this, ex this, this experience. And it was amazing because the second time she counted to three and it was just like, boom, 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 boom. You heard, you heard the hands coming together because everyone on the outside with the, you know, armed with this sense of love and wholeness were so much stronger than they were the first time. And then if you're doing this with a partner, um, reverse your roles and do it again, just so that each of you has that experience. But we are so much stronger that we, we are so much stronger when we are acting from love, when we are acting from the heart not just emotionally, mentally, we are physically stronger when we come from the place of the heart. I can, we can prove it through that experience. Um, as anecdotal as that might be, um, but it's the same as that kin kinesiology where um, you can hold, hold some food and close your eyes, ask if this food is good for you. And if you start to go forward, it's a yes, if you start to fall backwards, it's a no, or you can, you can test this out. It's kind of like a pendulum, a yes or no. You, you, you do interlocking your, your fingers, and then you ask a yes or no question. Is my name Julia? The fingers pull apart really easily. Is my name Patrick? And and of course you can just like, like, I don't do the pendulum much because it's too easy for me to kind of manipulate it. But, and you can kind of manipulate this, but if you're really honest with it, if you're true, asking questions, needing a yes or no answer, you can do that. And you will find when, you're, when your fingers hold it's a yes and when they break it's a no and you all it's 
it's a very useful tool to further point out that when things are for your best and highest good, you are stronger. Things, things connect, things hold. When you're working from a place of scatteredness or doing things that aren't in alignment with who you are, phew, you can't hold that line. Um, so your responsibility to the world, to the human race, is to try to find as much as you can elements of joy, elements of gratitude, elements of love. Because when we, when we, you know, conscious energy goes, energy flows where consciousness goes. And if we are constantly focusing on the connection between people, when we're constantly focusing on the solutions, energy flows and makes us aware of more solutions, of more connection, of more love. When we're focused and not focusing on the problems, we're focusing on the negatives, then we're not doing us or anyone else any good. Because any fixes we do, the, the um, surface, band-aid kind of things, if anything, um, it's only from that place of the heart, the place of truth, the place of wholeness that we make true change, true healing, true growth. And that is how each of us has the power to heal the world. And you don't have to heal the whole wide world. Don't, don't take the world on your shoulders. Like, they, like, the old, like in the 80s, they came up with that environmental phrase about Think globally, act locally. It's like, be concerned, you know, be informed on in what's going on, and then simplify, come back to your own life, focus on the things that are good for you. Look at the things you are grateful for in your own life. Because as you do that, that is how you raise your frequency. And as you raise your frequency, you seriously raise the frequency of the planet. Um, if you think of the, you know, web of life, the, we're, we're living, the universe is the web of life, right? That we're all connected. And if you took a spider web, if the spider web was flat, and you took a point on the, on the spider web and you lifted it, every point on the spider web is lifted. It doesn't all necessarily come up together, but every point of that spider web is lifted. And if, if each of us is a point on that web and we're raising our own frequency, then we're all picking it up from different points and the entire web is being raised. That's how powerful you are. We can't all, we can't do it on our own, but we need to remember that we are all connected. And the more you act from your place of love, from your place of joy and gratitude, you are lifting others around you so that it's easier for them to find that place of love and joy. And then, you know, they affect the people around them and so on and so on and so on. Um, and miracles happen. If you, are, if you are working on manifesting your best and highest good, your highest vibrational timeline, your best world, your best reality, isn't your, the best world meant to reflect and support you at your highest good, right? So focus on your own highest good and you will find the other things just falling into place and you will find yourself in a bigger world that supports your little bubble of reality. You don't have to change the world, just take care of yourself. Keep the world in mind. I'm not saying isolate and, you know, survival, um, become a survivalist, etc. But, 
for, from love, take care of yourself. That's your only responsibility, right? Because there are millions and billions of people who are doing the same thing. There are more people waking up right now on the planet than ever before. <coughs> and it's the baseline consciousness. There, there's a woman that I follow on YouTube um, check her out. Her name is Jana Jinton, and she lives in Sweden. She does um, videos of her life, the top of the world, living in the woods in this little cabin, doing ice baths and all these things. And just a while ago, she um, she reached four million followers. And what she did at that point was she turned it back on her followers and she, she said, if you could say one thing to four million people at the same time, what would it be? And then she was inundated with videos of people from around the world. And the messages are all about hope and love and care taking care of each other, loving each other, how we're all one family, we're all one tribe. And if you put together a video, um, and it's, it's like almost an hour long, and that's just a fraction of the video she got, but every single video, every little, it's just a couple minute clips of people from around the world, and they're all saying the same thing, that we're all one that we're all connected, that we need to love each other, that we need to love ourselves. That is the baseline consciousness that is rising on the planet right now. So don't let the, you know, the tyrants and the cacophony and politics get you down. Keep hope alive because miracles happen. And if you are alive on the planet today, you were you came here to help change the world. This is what we've been training for all these years of study, of reading, of learning our spiritual practices. This is what we've been training for. We can do this. So, so that is my message for tonight. I don't know where that all came from, but um, yeah, it, it's all true. We are one. There is no separation. That is where our hope lies. That is where our promise of, an, of a better world lies. Because we are all one. So, focus on the oneness, on the unity, on the connection. Celebrate every time you see someone helping, someone loving. Yesterday, yesterday or the day before, I was at the river doing ceremony, and there was a there was um, a family there, and they had two little boys, and the one boy started talking to this other. There was this, this couple there, this man and woman. And the, one of the boys started talking to the man and the mom comes running over. It's like, I'm so sorry. He's like, they'll just, he'll talk your ears off. He will just cling to you. And the, the, the man was like, it's okay, it's okay. He reminds me of myself when I was that age. And there was, there, there's this bridge over the river at that point, a trestle bridge. And someone had hung a rope from it for people to swing out and jump into the river. And this boy really wanted to do it. So this man, he, he got permission from the mom, of course. He was like, come on. And he swam the little boy across the river to where the rope was. And he pulled the rope in for this boy so that the boy could swing out and, and jump into the river. And it was just such a joyous thing. The boy was so happy. And this man was just, it was, he was like, he, it was like him healing his own inner child in a way. Um, and so it's like, notice those things. Notice when somebody helps someone, when someone says a kind word. Say a kind word to someone. 
If you notice someone's clothing, you know, compliment them or their hair or whatever, don't be afraid to be kind. Don't be afraid to reach out with your words, to connect with your words. You have no idea how powerful that is and how much those ripples go out and affect other people. Okay? All right, so I am going to drum and release the spirits that have so lovingly held us in their space. Um, when I'm done here, I will share this video to my Facebook page and I will also at some point, I'm a little, I'm a couple of weeks behind, but I will upload it to my Perching Wolf Studios YouTube channel. Um, so check out that channel. Um, I've got over four years worth of these videos. If you ever need to feel, if you ever need to be in sacred space, if you ever need that serenity or that connection, go to my, go to my um, YouTube channel, pull up one of the videos and watch it. I promise it will be exactly what you need in that moment. But no matter what it is I say, or even if you just watch the ceremony and not what I say, it'll be perfect. Uh, and, and also to remind you that I am here to help. My job as your friendly neighborhood shaman, as your local pipe carrier, to support you on your spiritual path. I have decades of practice, decades of training. Um, this is a calling, this is a vocation for me. This is my life's work. And I love my job. I love nothing more than to be able to help other people, to watch that light go on in other people as they realize how powerful they are. Um, when things start to clear up and they start to see those synchronicities I was talking about. That's my job. So you can learn more about me on my website, perchingwolfstudios.net. Um, and you can read about the different uh, services I offer. And you can set up a session with me right from that, that Facebook page. So, or not Facebook, my website, perchingwolfstudios.net. Uh, so if there's anything I can do, please let me know. We can set something up. Um, yeah. So let's release those spirits that have been so lovingly holding space. The crows have kind of moved on now that we're done with ceremony. So... started drumming I swear I heard a pheasant I didn't know we had any of those around here maybe it was something else oh it was a dog never mind <laughs> that, pheasant, the, that pheasant dog um, so thank you again for spending your time and your energy with me it means the world to me. We are so powerful when we get together, when we're in sync. Um, and I guess that's it. So I hope you will join me next week, Wednesday. Uh, Monday nights, I also, if you ever need a quick uh, reading on Monday nights, I do uh, one, I do miniature medicine card readings. I do a one card reading for six people. Um, 
but if you're not one of the first six people, you can still watch and you can choose a number between one and six and just watch for that particular card and I promise you that your message will be woven in and the beautiful way spirit has of doing that into the answer of whatever the person it's aimed at is. Um, so that's Monday nights at eight o'clock Pacific time right here on my Facebook page. And until I see you again, know that I love you, that I see you, and that I honor you. Have a wonderful week and go shining. All right, bye for now.